What was the most dickish way in which a friend showed you that you're not as close as you thought? Part 4. Kick back and enjoy the ride. If you dig what we do, hit that subscribe button and share the love for Thread Tonic. Count one. Okay. Well, I'll admit I haven't posted on Reddit much. Only once before, as I remember, and I created an account after lurking for quite some time. But this topic kind of hits home for me. There are three times in my life that this topic makes me remember. So I'll start from the earliest. During freshman year, I began to reconnect with a friend who I had not really hung around with since middle school. The times that we did hang out, we had sleepovers, hung out at each other's houses, and overall just spent a fair amount of time together. We were both, for the most part, anti-social kids, and we only really connected with each other because of this. But over time, due to different club activities, we grew apart and stopped talking altogether before high school. By sophomore year, I had finally begun to recover from what I like to refer to as my own personal hell on earth. That was middle school. Yeah, I didn't mention it before, but due to bullying, I was severely depressed and considered suicide many times during middle school. Thank God I had the support of my parents and brother. Right around this time, I was also beginning to reconnect with my friend, and he had become far more social than I, and to a degree, I felt like I could make a few friends again with his help. One day, during our biology class, we were talking in a small group with his friends, and one of them mentioned that we had begun to become close friends as of late. He nearly slaughtered me with his response. Nah, we're not friends, more like acquaintances. It doesn't sound bad, but to my younger self, who was finally regaining confidence in making a few friends, it was like driving a stake right through my heart. I managed to maintain a poker face and give a shrug at his response, but inside, I was ready to die. This brings me to the second time in my life. But this time, I was the one hurting someone else. I was about a semester into my new high school junior year. I had devoted myself to being more social here and almost immediately made a fairly good friend. I was also on the verge of talking to the coolish kids who seemed to know everyone and whom I wanted to be friends with. Of course, my first friend was more of the loser type and was closer to what I was like during middle school and freshman year, socially awkward, and picked on more than anyone else. We were sitting in physics class having our little conversation group, when in comes the question. So you've been getting pretty close to Mike lately. Are you two friends now? And of course, what did I blurt out? Nah, we're more acquaintances. Immediately, I had a flashback to my freshman year, and I have regretted my answer ever since. Of course, it was also due to this answer that I went home that day and decided, fuck the cool kids. I know where I belong and want to be. I ended up becoming fantastically close friends with Mike until we graduated. We had a bit of a ritual where nearly every day we would go to either Arby's, Wendy's, or McDonald's and then to one of our houses to hang out. Finally, event number three involving Mike. Upon graduation from high school, we went our separate ways to a degree. I went away to school while he remained at home and went to a local college. During winter break, we caught up and I found out that he had landed himself a solid girlfriend, but had also dropped out of college. Regrettably, I voiced my opinions on the matter, but I knew it was his decision and he hated school anyway. To try and remain in his life, I decided that I wanted to meet his girlfriend and get to know her. He ended up taking me to where she worked since she had issues with scheduling. We showed up at a white castle next to a gas station at 10 p.m. at night. I thought, whatever gets the bills paid gotta respect someone for sticking with what they can get for the time being. We walked in, and I started looking at the girls working. Mike was trying to get me to guess who she was, and he had said previously that I would not personally find her attractive. My choices were a very cute girl who looked too young, a woman in her 40s, an incredibly obese girl, and a sort of average-looking, slightly overweight girl. So, I chose the last option. He corrected me and pointed to the incredibly obese girl, much to my surprise. In the end, I was not able to talk to her because she was obviously working, and it seemed reasonably busy, so we got out of their way and hung out a little more before I went back home. I repeatedly tried to set up meetings. And long story short, she ended up hating me for no reason other than wanting to get to know her and meet her 
as well as removing me from his Facebook, phone, and forbidding him from meeting with me. I found out last summer when talking to him that he nearly married her and never once told me about it or considered inviting me, despite me being the only person who has continually tried to continue contact with him and was his best friend in high school. This time, I have grown up significantly and was going into my junior year of college. I was not depressed. I was pissed. I have been considering asking Reddit for help on how to get rid of the girlfriend. The story is much longer, but this post is already long enough as it is, and I have not found a suitable subreddit yet. TLDR. Friend once snubbed me freshman year of high school. I did the exact same thing to Mike in junior year, regretted it, and became amazingly close friends with him. This same Mike got a girlfriend, dropped out of college, let her control him and be separated from me, and almost got married without even letting me know. As a note, his parents and sister all liked me, and every time I have gone to his old place, not sure if he lives there at the moment, they have done everything they can to help me in any way I asked. This usually just meant giving me the address of where he is living and his current phone number, as well as a brief summary of his situation. Account 2. Man. This has me paranoid. I'm planning our wedding now and money is tight. There are some heavy edits for the guest list, both for friends and family. I mean, no offense, really. But some of the edits are people who are part of a larger group. They're going to hate me forever, I guess. Account 3. I had a close lady friend for a couple of years. Yada, yada, yada. We both finally came out and admitted we liked each other as more than friends. I asked her to prom. She denied because her boyfriend the previous year had cheated on her on prom night. I'm just going to go out to dinner with some girlfriends. I asked a couple more times and got the same answer. One day she came up in conversation with a mutual acquaintance. Oh yeah, the girl going to prom with so-and-so, right? No, you must be mistaken. She's not going to prom this year. Come to find out, she was actually going to prom with some other dude. It broke my fucking heart. That was eight years ago now and I still hate thinking about it. I'm such a pussy. Account 4. Long story short, my best friend got pregnant with my ex-boyfriend and attempted to, one, lie about being pregnant, but that didn't work out too well after six months, and then two, lie about who the dad was. We were best friends since eighth grade. We were 17 when this all happened. Haven't talked to her since her kid was born. I felt like I could have been on Jerry Springer or Maury. It was ridiculous and embarrassing. Account 5. Sorry guys, I have to counter all the sadness in this thread with some good vibes. When I was growing up, I had a lot of trouble making friends. I was always the outcast fat nerdy kid. Everybody made fun of me, even the people who said they were my friends. It didn't help that up until high school, I moved approximately once a year and switched schools many times. As you might expect, this played a big part in my becoming socially awkward and anxious. Then, in my first year of college, I joined a fraternity and got a taste of what real friends are like. I had some great times, and then, for reasons that don't need to be voiced, I moved to Kentucky, where I spent a year or so out of school. I sorely missed being back home and tried to keep in relatively frequent contact with my brothers. They responded for a while, but contact became infrequent and finally stopped as they left school, got married, and moved on with their lives. I felt alone again. Now, three years after getting back into school and moving through shitty friend after shitty friend, I've finally become active in a local hacker space, have a job that I absolutely love as a software developer at my university, and have found the best friend I've ever had in a guy I met through the space and who got hired at the same time I did. He does me much kindness, so much so that I feel like I'm taking advantage of him, but most of the time he won't let me repay him. Mike D, if you're stalking me, I love you, man. No homo. Account 6. My roommate freshman year and I got along pretty well. And one evening, she told me that she was going to a friend of hers choir concert. I went along, and they invited me out to dinner with them afterwards. While there, they were shit-talking the friend's roommate, Katie, who I was close with. I said something to the effect of, Haha, well at least I don't talk about roommate like this with Katie. Nervous laughter ensued from my roommate and her friend. I shook it off, 
thinking they just didn't know how to respond to the comment, as they were both kind of socially awkward. The next weekend, I drank for the first time in my life and had an absolutely horrible experience. I had my headphones on that Sunday afternoon, and she thought I couldn't hear her, but she called me an annoying, fake, slacker slut to her friend from home. Account 7. When I was in elementary school, around seven years old, the teacher set us an art assignment where we had to do a portrait of our best friend in the class. My best friend was Neil, and we'd spend all recess and after schools together, etc. We couldn't show our portraits until the rest of the class had finished, which built up the excitement of it all. When it finally came time to reveal our portraits one by one, it turns out he drew another guy in our class, who also drew him. I remember sneaking out of my classroom to throw it out and pretending like an idiot that I'd lost it while going to the restroom. And then I went home and cried. I cried a lot as an awkward child. I think from then on, I've been pretty wary of ever calling someone a best friend, always waiting for the other person to say it before I can. Account 8. My best friend wanted to cheer me up one weekend because I had found out my boyfriend of four years had gotten engaged to the girl he was cheating on me with a month after we broke up. I got to her house, where I thought we would play Mario Kart, watch horrible videos on YouTube, and eat pizza rolls like we always did. But when I got there, her boyfriend was occupying my spot. I have a specific spot on her bed that I always sit in and no one else. I sat on the computer chair and had nothing to do but sit there and listen to them make out all night. Yeah, they do a great job cheering up, and they do this shit all the time. She will flake out on plans we made with one of our other girlfriends. Or she just won't answer her phone. Once I was stuck in another city with another friend of mine. We didn't have enough money for the bus and were texting everyone we knew who had access to a car. I texted her around 3 in the afternoon, asking her if her boyfriend could get the car and come get us. No reply, ever. A few weeks later, it came up in a conversation and she said, Oh yeah, I got that text around 7. I could tell it was a lie. And well, I figured it had been a few hours and you probably figured it out. So I just pretended I didn't get it and didn't reply, LOL. She could have at least texted me to make sure I did in fact get home all right. BTW, I was stranded there until 9 o'clock. She also makes me be the one to contact our other girlfriend to be the one who has to tell her we can't make it to her house or whatever the plans were. Account 9. Best friends with this girl since 7th grade. She was much prettier, cooler, yada yada. We live close to each other, hang out all the time. I even go on a trip to Mexico with her and her mom. I am practically a member of her family. Freshman year, I get really busy doing a play and don't see much of her for a couple of months. Come to find out she'd been drunk at school nearly every day during that time and was apparently stealing her mom's Xanax and other meds too, along with some sexy times with her older boyfriend, which really pissed off her dad. Her parents sort of overreact and send her to a short little rehab program. While she is there, I babysat her little sister so her parents could go to counseling with her. I hung out with her mom and listened to her probs, wrote the girl a heartfelt letter of support, Doc's apology for not being there when she was having problems or whatever. I was the only friend she still allowed to talk to all summer. Got in huge blowout fights with my mom who didn't like me being friends with someone who did drugs. Little did she know I was just as bad first day of school, I walk up and say, Hey, because you generally greet your friends. And she gave me the most epic stank face she could muster and walked away. This was also the first time she had indicated that anything was wrong with our friendship at all. Because after she got out of the program, we hung out all the frickin' time and had a blasty blast. There were always weird situations where she would use me, and I suppose I should have realized that she was only my friend because she knew she could get me to do whatever she wanted. One time she asked me to babysit her sister so that she could hang out with our other close friend without me. I did it. We literally never spoke again until junior year when she had a crush on a guy friend of mine who I ended up dating and tried to be friends with me again to learn more about him. Her little sister still called me for a while and wanted to hang out because she missed me. Classic example of how one person can be totally invested in a friendship and the other person could give less than a shit. TLDR best friend ditched me for cooler friends on first day of school, even though I was her only correspondence from rehab. Account 10. Okay, this is an easy one because it just happened three days ago. I called my friend of 17 years a few days ago and asked him to give me a ride to go get my car. 
which was parked 20 blocks away, so I wouldn't miss my parents' anniversary dinner. He responded, that's not that far. I'm watching TV. So I asked, surprised, if he really wouldn't give me this five-minute ride. And he just grunted. Not even words. Just a grunt. So I walked for half an hour, got my car, and got to the restaurant 30 minutes late and drenched in sweat. Account 11. Pretty simple. Didn't come to my dad's funeral because he had to run errands. My dad passed away in 2009, about a month after I graduated college. I called a friend who I was extremely close with throughout elementary school and high school, who my dad viewed as another son. We lost touch a bit about halfway through my college years, but when my dad passed, he was one of the first people I called because I thought he had the right to know. I'd found my dad on Monday, June 15th, 2009. The service was the following Sunday, Father's Day. Said friend called me in the middle of the scheduled service to tell me that he had to run errands and get groceries so he couldn't make it. A girl I had some history with in school drove five hours to be there for me. He couldn't drive five minutes. Haven't talked to the guy since. Account 12. Stupid bitch pretended to be my friend, sat at my table complaining about her husband, would listen to me complain about my husband, then go tell my husband lies, saying I'd said I didn't want to be married anymore, that I wanted to go lesbo, that I would let the two of them get together, she convinced him, although it probably didn't take much, and ended up having an affair with him. All the while insisting that she was my friend. With friends like that, who needs enemas? Seriously. I have no respect for anybody who will knowingly mess around with a married person. Account 13. I was always the party planner in the group. Parties, picnics, clubbing. I set a date and everyone came. My husband then fiancé moved away, long distance, though still got married half a year later in our hometown. We invited all the old gang from high school and new friends from university. All attended. It was a great day. We were married outside. I got swarmed for conversation before our photos. We both made the rounds and spoke to each guest at least twice, our generation more due to the bar, dance floor, and staying late. Great day. Off we go for our honeymoon. I returned home to an email from Jane. She sent it the day after our wedding. Big ass rant about how she was so hurt because I promised Bob would be there and he didn't attend. I also didn't set her up with any men and didn't hang out with her like we used to. I never called and I was always a bitch to her. Plus I had to keep leaving her during conversation to do cake cutting, garter toss, etc. And how could I do that? Ern, it was our wedding. I can't babysit or play matchmaker. I actually thought we were good friends and was surprised. I emailed back to see if there were any issues that I wasn't aware of, and it came down to me somehow not playing host well enough at our wedding and never calling her. Maybe there will be another post here about some bitch bride that couldn't be bothered to set Jane up with a guy or babysit her all night. Account 14. I worked in the residence halls in college, so you live and work with your friends. I hung out with this guy every day. We stayed up late at night having deep conversations, watched movies, would keep each other company at work, even if one of us was off. And most importantly, I was always his shoulder to cry on because he was having a rough year. Towards the end of the year, I found out a secret he'd been keeping from me, which was kind of understandable, but still not super encouraging. People need their secrets. However, I graduated first and moved off campus. The only time I ever saw him was when I walked 40 men up to campus the next academic year he never drove the seven men to my house to hang out, despite saying over and over that he would. I stopped communicating with him because I don't find one-sided friendships enjoyable. Anytime he wants to talk to me, it is so I can be his shoulder to cry on. But when he wants to go out and have fun, he goes out with really shallow people. Often they are the ones who cause his life drama in the first place. I haven't talked to him in months, and he just sent me a request to write him a LinkedIn recommendation. Yeah, I don't think I will do that. Account 15. A friend of my husband's and mine, but they went to high school together. Few weeks before our wedding, we asked him to help us move my mother-in-law move into her new house because we were having the wedding there. Friend said sure. Also said told me he'd be throwing the bachelor party for my husband, who doesn't have many close friends. And I was worried about this, but very grateful and relieved that the friend offered. Week of the move! He's on Facebook pleading for someone to go with him to a fucking NASCAR race that is being held on the day of the move. We confront him about it, asking to confirm whether or not he's helping with the move. 
He gives us these wishy-washy answers like, sure, if he's not busy, he'll help, even though he already said he would. So we're like, dude, that's mean, but whatever, and he flips, tells us to fuck off and have a nice wedding. No bachelor party, no contact since then. I'm still bitter about this cause I thought that was as nasty as you can get. And his brother owed my husband 60. Fuck you, Matt, and your brother Sean. I hope you have a shitty life and that whatever NASCAR driver you root for always loses.